Today is also a huge day in Georgia. It is Election Day, and the stakes are high. With control of the U.S. Senate in the balance, here's a live look at voters in Canton, Georgia, lined up to cast their ballots. Okay, so how did we get here? Well, Georgia state rules, they require a winning candidate to get 50 percent of the vote. Well, in November, no Senate candidates topped that mark. So today, Republican incumbent David Perdue facing Democratic challenger John Ossoff. Republican Kelly Loeffler is defending her seat against Democrat. Uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock. Now, if the Democrats are victorious in both races, they'll essentially seize control of the Senate. Uh, so here we turn to, of course, the master of the big board, MSNBC <laughs> national political correspondent, Mr. Steve Kornacki. Hey, hello, Steve. How are you? Good morning. Happy Election Day to you. Oh, That's my right. God. I'm running All right. out. I love this. So, so why do these two Georgia Senate races matter? And how could these Senate seats potentially impact the the incoming Biden administration's plans. Yeah, you just laid at the bottom line there. I mean, we are basically in 2021. This is still the 2020 election that we're settling here. We know Democrats are going to have the White House. We know Democrats are going to have control of the House of Representatives. This is the remaining unfinished piece of business, control of the U.S. Senate. So right now, Republicans are going to have at least 50 seats, Democrats at least 48. It is these two Georgia seats today that are in the runoff that are going to decide this. If the Republicans win even one of these seats today, just one of the two, they'd be at 51 they would have the majority in the Senate. They would control the Senate for the incoming Biden administration. Suddenly, there is a giant potential roadblock mm. in terms of getting its agenda through, having Republicans control the Senate. If Democrats pick up both of these seats, 50-48 becomes 50-50. A 50-50 tie in the Senate is broken by the vice president. That would be Kamala Harris. Democrats would then, if they kept everybody in line on every vote, mm -hmm. would be able to move through a Biden uh, agenda through the Senate, potentially through the House, and then potentially into law. So potentially huge difference here uh, for the incoming administration. Steve, this is usually all over my head, but you explain it so well <laughs> doing what you do. Uh, but what did we see in terms of early voting? Where do the races stand as voters in Georgia head to the polls this morning? What do you see? Yeah, let's take a look here. And of course, early voting, I always caution folks, be careful here because it can be deceiving. This is this is what happened in November when Biden carried this state very narrowly here. Uh, the question for Democrats today is basically, can they replicate this? Can they do in these Senate races today exactly what Joe Biden did? Because, I mean, look at this margin for Biden. Under 12,000 votes statewide, two-tenths of one point. This is the first time a Democrat carried Georgia in a presidential race since all the way back in 1992, and he did it barely. So Democrats mm -hmm. need to replicate that today. They feel good about getting uh, some of their core voting groups out during the early voting period. One area, there's a lot of uh, counties sort of in this section of the state right here with large black populations where Democrats feel they could have done better in November in terms of turnout, and they feel potentially they have done better in the early voting period in getting a larger African-American turnout. Uh, we will see, because the question, of course, the big variable is what you just showed there. Uh, Canton, Georgia, for instance, same day voting. Mm. How many Republicans are going to turn out mm. and vote today? Is that going to overwhelm any advantage Democrats built up in the early voting period? We have seen this story many times before before where it has. Democrats are feeling optimistic this will be the time the early voting gets them over the top. We will find out, hopefully, tonight. Well, I was going to ask you, Steve, we probably won't know the, because even if you get everything in, if there's a certain percentage, the, the uh, person can demand a recount. Right. And if, if we're anything like we were in this Biden-Trump race back in November, you're talking about a potential recount. I should point out, too, Biden ended up winning the state Biden did not take the lead in the vote count in Georgia until 3 a.m. Hmm. Friday morning wow. of election week. Because now <laughs> I, I have talked to some county officials. They believe they learned a lot of lessons in November about how to count process these mail votes. Mm -hmm. So they, they think it will be quicker hmm. this time. Okay. But this did take days back in November. Wow. Well, Steve, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of you, by the way. You're going to join us the next couple of Fridays to preview some major NFL games, switching gears a little bit. But you've got the big board, and we can't wait. You've been doing such a great job on Football Night in America, so we can't wait to have you back. I, I can't wait to do it. we got more playoff games than ever with the expansion this year. It'll be All fun. Right. This is great. He's got extra pants. So that's <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. All right.